Hi, and welcome to the final session in our series called The World is Not Enough. Uh, really, we're looking at salvation, and I hope during the different home group meetings, um, you've really been wrestling individually, even as a, as a home group, wrestling with this question, what does it mean to be really saved? It's such a difficult question. It's such a difficult question for us to answer. Um, even as a pastor, I can't go out to anyone and say, oh, you're saved, you're not saved. I can't judge a person by their appearance, by how many years they've been a Christian. I can't judge them by uh, whether they know scripture really well or whether how many hours they pray because so much of it lies on the inside on their dependence on Jesus who who knows a new comer who much like the Samaritan woman maybe has come in really seeking God and says Jesus I need you and then follows after Jesus, like what we said in our last session of hear and obey. Who knows? That person, because their whole life is dependent on Jesus, may be truly saved. Yet another person may be coming to church and it's just remote control for them. It's just a normal culture for them to come and their mind, their heart is so distant from God that they never even ask the question, what would Jesus want me to do today or with my life? Or that Jesus can't direct them like a Lord. Well, maybe they're not saved and no matter what religious work they do, no matter what classes they go for, it's not, their works are not going to save them. And maybe they need to turn and depend on Jesus. Uh, today we talk about victory and so maybe you've been going through this session and you've been wondering, okay, I know Jesus uh, says he is the Savior and I know John clearly puts it out there that nothing can happen without Jesus Christ and that he is the light, that he is the bread of life, that he is the true vine, that he is the living water, all of these things. But maybe you're not convinced. The series is called The World Is Not Enough because our primary competitor for Jesus now, um, the Bible calls it mammon or, or money, but a, good, a better translation would be the things that this world can offer. That in today's day and age, uh, for a lot of us, the world is enough. I just want to get a good education. I just want to get a good house. Uh, I want these things. I want, a, I want a girlfriend. I want a boyfriend. I want my life in this world to be happy. Today's session looks at the world is smaller than Jesus. Jesus is greater than the world. He has got victory over the world. John 16, 33, if I could just read that for you. It says this. Jesus says it of himself. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. Shalom. The Hebrew word for peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I think there is nothing, there is no greater story that John tells than the final story which would be the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That would be the example of why we, it is so victorious to put our trust in on Jesus. Because if we put our trust in all of these things in the world, um, the truth is Jesus is greater than that and he's overcome. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the cross in Jesus' time was a symbol that Rome would be victorious. It was a symbol that the world was in charge. Um, nowadays, that cross, uh, which was a symbol of Rome's victory, is a symbol of Jesus' victory. Where once on a hill would stand a cross with some kind of criminal on it, and people would say, oh man, I better not mess with Rome. 
because Rome has overcome. That image of the cross is now known worldwide for Jesus has overcome. We've just celebrated Easter earlier this year. Um, you need to know that in your life, if you place your dependence on Jesus, then His victory becomes your victory. It's actually very freeing. You are not then saved by your own works and your own righteousness, but you're saved because Jesus so loved you. When the world came up against Jesus, it lost. When you place your dependence on the things of this world, it ends up losing. It ends up losing. And that's why John, um, he, he writes this book, so that you might place your bet, bank your life, put your whole faith and trust on the right thing, Jesus. I just want to end with, I guess, an illustration of Judas. Judas Iscariot. Judas hung around with Jesus, was supposedly a disciple, but he only wanted Jesus for his own agenda. For him, Jesus was a meal ticket for his own means. I want to challenge you not to be like Judas, but to be a an authentic disciple. What do the words personal relationship with Jesus mean to you? Um, Jesus doesn't want to come into your heart. He wants you to go into his world. Jesus can, has to be your Lord and Savior. If he's not your Lord, he can't be your Savior. And if He's your Savior, then He has to be your Lord to save you. I uh, hope through this whole series, it renews your view on what salvation is. You know, C.S. Lewis says, for the person who's going in the wrong direction, turning around and starting again is the best possible thing. It's the best progress you can make. That's why John talks about being born again. That's why we look at um, restarting our Christian walk with Christ. Uh, I want to challenge you as we close today's session and our whole series even. Um, is the world enough for you? Or are you dependent on Jesus? desperately dependent on Him because He is victorious. We're going to look at some aspects of victorious Christian life now. God bless.